The next situation in tennis where we do something just in case is movement to the ball. And I've made a more extensive video on this topic where I talk about beating the ball, meaning that you beat the ball to the hitting point, you're there earlier than the ball. You can click the card above and I will also put a link in the description to that previous video that goes more in depth into that topic, which is very important for beginners and intermediate players. And today we're just going to mention it briefly, I will show you what goes on so that you know that this is another situation where you have to apply the just-in-case concept. So in this example, I will show you the incorrect way of moving to the ball. So I've asked Kaya to hit a bit left-right and move me around. So what I'm showing in this example is that when the ball is going away from me, I'm always starting slow. I'm starting slow. And along the way, I try to figure out the speed of the ball and the speed of my movement. Now, since most of the balls were not going too far from me, they're kind of going here and they're not too fast, then I get away with it. So I'm moving slow to the ball. And when I'm hitting the ball, I'm usually still moving. So you can see that even though this ball is not fast and it's not going away far from me, it's coming right somewhere in the middle of one half, I am still not able to set up for the ball and I'm still moving while hitting. And that, of course, decreases the chances of controlling the ball well. And so on the other side, the ball is hit to the other side. Again, I am starting to move slow and I see how it goes. So again, you can see I'm hitting the ball while moving. So I'll just gonna, I'm just going to play the clip now at normal speed and you try to see how this keeps happening that I'm moving to the ball with the minimum speed necessary and I'm usually moving when I'm hitting so in this case I happened to hit in the net but I want to show you how I started to move so I started to move slow and then I was starting to speed up and so obviously that is very intuitive to players to people because we are looking to conserve energy all the time and we're trying to figure out is it really necessary to move at full speed towards this ball because at first you don't know so when the ball starts to go like this at this stage of the shot I can't yet tell is this ball going over the net or not or how fast is it or how far from me is it going so in this stage, I just have to go as fast as I can. I will show you later. I have to go just in case this ball goes over, this ball is fast and this ball goes away from me. Because if I am wrong in my initial assessment and I think the ball is going closer and slower and I realize that it's going further and faster, then I have no more time to catch up and correct that. So I'm going to show you this in another clip. So here's a similar situation where Kaya makes the shot. So again, this first forehand, you can see that I'm playing while moving. So I'm hitting forehand and I'm still moving while hitting. So now I've recovered a little bit. So now Kaya is hitting the ball and the ball starts to go. And you can see that I'm starting to go slow. And now I'm realizing, whoops, starting to go slow. And I'm realizing, oops, this ball is fast and going away from me. And only now I'm starting to speed up. And so you can see that I'm starting to speed up when the ball is around the net. So it has flown 50% of its flight already when I'm starting to realize, oops, this ball is really fast. I need to speed up. So I want to show you that. This is a problem in tennis that we cannot wait to realize when is the ball fast or not and then start speeding up. We have to move just in case immediately the ball is fast and then if it's not, then we're going to have a lot of time to set up for the shot. So in the second example, I am moving just in case to the ball. So whenever I see the ball going away from me, like in this case, if I replay this forehand, so I see the ball hit away from me and I'm immediately starting fast 
just in case this ball is fast, because at this moment, you can see the ball here, at this moment, I cannot yet know for sure the ball's speed and exact direction. All I see that it's going away from me, but I can't tell by now in a few tenths of a second whether this ball is going here or this ball going, is going here and how fast is it. And because we can't tell exactly in the first split second the exact direction of the ball and the exact speed of the ball, then we have to move as fast as we can in the direction of the ball in the worst case scenario. So we're preparing for the worst case scenario. So you can see that this ball was hit quite far away from me and I still managed to set my foot and I'm not moving anymore. So I ended up in open stance and I'm now stable, not moving and hitting in open stance. And so here's a, another forehand that is hit back. So because I, I'm doing split step, remember we're doing split step just in case we have to move quickly. I'm not being wrong footed. And again, I can move very quickly to the ball. And again, I am stable and I'm not moving when hitting the ball. And so that increases the probability of good ball control and precision. So we're going to take a look at a few more forehands. So this is an example where the ball is relatively slow and not far away from me. And because I'm now moving just in case very quickly, so I'm moving very quickly in the direction of the ball. And then I realize, okay, this ball is not that fast. You can see how early my foot is set. I'm not moving anymore. And now I have a lot of time. So if I put like this, that you see once my foot comes on the ground and I put a timer on the screen, you can see that I am in position seven tenths of a second. I'm seven tenths of a second earlier than the ball on this easy ball. And that, of course, gives me time to calm down, to watch the ball all the time here. So I'm watching the ball carefully and I can hit this ball very precisely with very good control. You can see that I'm hitting the sweet spot. So the earlier I get in the position, the more I can calm down, the more I can stabilize, the better I can see the ball and the more precisely I will hit it. So here's one shot to the back end, and you can see that again, my foot is not moving. So I had time to position. And that's because initially I'm moving fast to the ball. So here we go again. You can see this ball is hit very far from me. So again, at this stage of the ball flight, I can't yet say how far this ball is going. But just in case, I'm going very fast in the ball's direction, you can see that I'm going very fast immediately. And I still manage to hit the ball well, even though it's, you know, almost outside of the camera, I am positioned, I'm not moving. And you can see that I've recovered almost all the way back, even though I was almost outside of the court. And so in this case, Here's another interesting example. So let me play it first at full speed that you see that I barely made it. And the reason why I eventually made this shot is because immediately when, when Kaya hit the ball, so when Kaya hit the ball, I was doing a split step and then I immediately speed up towards the ball. And you see, see it's a very good shot and I still made it. Of course, I was in defense, but I still made it, hit a good defensive shot and Kaya was a bit in trouble, a bit surprised, and now I am back in the rally. And so these are examples of me moving very quickly in the direction of the ball, just in case the ball is going to be very difficult. So what you saw in this example is that I was always ready and I moved very quickly in the direction of the ball. And of course, many times I did beat the ball to the meeting point. I was there earlier. I moved just in case the ball is fast. If the ball wasn't fast when, then I was ready. I had enough time to calmly execute the stroke. And when the ball was fast, I got there just in time and still was able to handle it well.